Macau, casino capital of Asia, a tiny outpost of sin in straight-laced China, where bright lights lure in visitors to play the tables and sample the high life. Despite, or perhaps because of its loose reputation, Macau has become the biggest gambling destination in Asia. And it's about to get even bigger, quite literally. Because it's about to become home for the biggest casino in the world, to be built in record time. Think of gambling? Think of Vegas, that glitzy, brash, notorious gambling town where money flows like water in the middle of the Nevada desert. Running the Venetian casino here has made American billionaire businessman Sheldon Adelson a fortune, on top of several other fortunes. When he opened a huge casino in Macau for the first time, it was massively popular too, and paid for its construction within 12 months. Adelson knew at once that this was fertile ground for his most ambitious project yet. I felt that if we could get enough land, that I would be able to reproduce Las Vegas in Asia and call it a strip. There would be hotels, casinos, theaters, and conference facilities. And the flagship resort, a giant version of the Venetian planted here in Asia the biggest casino the world has ever seen. This is an ambitious project. A hotel with 3,000 suites. A mall with hundreds of shops ranged alongside indoor canals hundreds of meters long. An outdoor lagoon where guests can take long gondola rides. A 15,000 seat arena. And above all, a vast casino floor, almost the size of seven football pitches. It'll be the second biggest building in the world at a projected cost of over two billion US dollars. The Macau government welcomes this massive project. There is just one problem. Macau is a tiny territory, less than one sixth the area of Washington DC on the southern seaboard of China. It consists of a peninsula and two small hilly islands, Kaloan and Taipa together crammed to bursting with a population of half a million. So the question arises, where to put this huge Vegas Strip and its centerpiece casino? There just isn't the room. The government said, well, we'll find land for you. So I drove out here and I said, what land? They said, well, you'll have to reclaim it. It's underwater. The government is perfectly serious. Not only should Adelson build an Asian version of the Vegas Strip here, he should first create the land for it to rest upon. The whole space between the islands of Kaloan and Taipa is to be filled in, becoming the so-called Kotai Strip, crowned with his signature Venetian branded casino. The architectural mastermind behind the whole project is Frank McCaldrick, who is more than aware of the challenges that building the biggest casino in the world will bring. Our project in Macau is almost double the size of the original Las Vegas property. So we had the challenge of size. And of course, we also had the challenge of time. We first broke ground in the middle of 2004, and we need to be opening in the middle of 2007. So that's just three years to create 11 million square feet from scratch. Why the big hurry? As ever in big business, it comes down to dollars and cents. Construction on this scale costs megabucks. Adelson's large Sands Casino in Macau paid back its cost of 265 million US dollars within a year. The Venetian Macau will cost almost 10 times this sum. A single day's delay will mean a substantial loss in revenues. So the reclamation begins with sand, lots of sand. 3 million cubic meters or 1200 Olympic swimming pools. Six million tons in all are dumped into the sea. Pile it on, and bingo, perfect land. Of course, it's not that simple. This sand brought in from China sits on the mud already there, and that sits on top of marine clay. The builders may be clamoring to start, but they can't yet. The ground is way too soft to put a mega casino on. Engineers George Chan and Philip Lai, the brains behind the reclamation process, 
are very clear about this. We must make sure that the building is sitting safely on solid foundation. It's a very heavy building and the ground condition here is very soft. The reason is that the clay layer has water trapped inside. They calculate that parts of the site may subside up to 1.7 meters, more than enough to break the back of any building resting on it. The solution they come up with is, surprisingly, more sand. Four meters of sand. All that weight compresses the clay until it can't move anymore, a process known as surcharging. But the water that is squeezed out will need somewhere to go. Enter the band drains, which drain all that water upwards. A machine plunges tubes of a specific fabric deep into the clay. The water squeezed out by the surcharge layer enters these tubes and goes up to the surface. The idea is that within some three months, the settling will be finished. Three idle months before the builders can get started. The clock is ticking. Sheldon Adelson remains confident. He's built casinos before. As far as we're concerned, this is a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. I'm telling you that because I know we can do it. We've done it in Las Vegas and we could do it here. Bold words for a man who is in the process of becoming the single biggest private investor into China. Three months later and the building can finally start. Even though there is no further risk of subsidence, sand on clay still remains too soft for regular foundations. These are piles, essentially giant concrete poles. They are hammered into the soil, centimeter by centimeter, roughly 50 meters into the ground. They are held in place by the friction of the soil against them. The Kotai site is to use an unprecedented 14,000 of them. But the hotel building itself, at a mind-boggling 730,000 tons, will be far too large and heavy to rely on poles sticking in the sand. There's an obvious solution, to build on rock. Unfortunately, the bedrock here is at least 70 meters below the surface. So the big guns of the piling world are brought in. Just 116 larger piles will be added, but they will be a massive three meters in diameter, sheathed in steel sleeves, and they will be drilled out right the way down to the bedrock. Finally, the building itself can commence. But will the scores of contractors be able to meet the challenge? Not just to get it done on time, but to get it done to such a quality that the guests will want to flock here. Just weeks later, and building work has started on the largest casino in the world, the Venetian in the tiny Chinese territory of Macau. There's a traditional celebration for the start of a new business. It's being held in what is to be the Venetian's signature space, a large inner atrium. They call it the wow space, after the effect on the visitor they're aiming to achieve. As responsibility for the wow space is handed over to the outfitting company, prayers are said for prosperity. Frank McGoldrick, the chief architect, is taking the opportunity to show the pièce de résistance to his client, Matthew Pryor. So we got all the, uh, the scaffoldings moving across and coming here, and then we drop down and we're putting the, the escalators in. Yeah. These curved escalators. We're quite excited about those, actually. They're pretty good. Yeah. The wow space is going to be the heart of the building, almost literally, as all movement will flow through it. It's at the center of the casino floor, and the chief link between it and the indoor shopping streets and canals above. Outside, the water theme continues. A huge lagoon for gondola rides. There's even room for a golf course on the roof. Around the edges, a small theater, an arena, and convention space. Towering above it, a 3,000 suite hotel. 
It's a honeypot for construction workers who have flooded in from all over the region in their thousands. There's a maximum of 11,500 workers on the Venetian site at any one time. But there are plenty of illegal workers here just hoping for a job. With regular police raids, the contractors have had to come up with a solution to get the official workers in rapidly and keep the illegals out. IDs can be forged and punch cards used by anyone. So a handprint recognition system has been installed. It's efficient and above all, speedy. And speed is of the essence. The race is on to opening day when the casino can start earning back its construction costs. How to keep everything speedy? As with everything in life, it's all in the planning. The department heads get together regularly. It's their job to make sure that all the separate strands of construction mesh smoothly. Not least, how to throw up the casino as rapidly as possible. The solution? The Venetian basically comes in kit form. Pouring and setting concrete on site would just be too time consuming. Instead, the individual sections, all small enough to be carried on trucks, are made over the border in China. Even the rebars, the steel reinforcement bars that strengthen concrete structures, are made in bulk in Chinese factories. All these elements come together at the Venetian site in Macau. Tiny pieces in the world's biggest jigsaw puzzle. Cranes assemble the prefabricated pieces in a complex ballet of hoisting and positioning. Once they can reach no further, they have to be disassembled and then rebuilt in a new position. It can take days. Days which this project doesn't have. So the contractors have to come up with another solution. This fella actually backs out of the area, okay, on rails. Comes out, erecting vertically as it comes out. Once again, saving time and keeping up with the flood of deliveries. It's a very big time saving, and obviously time saving is money. The cranes continue their dance, and a megastructure arises over days and weeks, rather than months and years. The vast Venetian complex arises on the Macau skyline. How is it that such a small territory could possibly be home to such a mammoth enterprise? The answer lies in Macau's unique history. Portugal administered Macau for four centuries while it became a sleepy backwater, a touch of Mediterranean style in Asia, filled with charming colonial buildings, a world heritage site. With gambling strictly controlled in neighboring China, Macau decided that a casino would net a great deal of cash. They were right. Gamblers were drawn in their thousands. Casino tourism became one of Macau's primary sources of income. Now, there are over 25 casinos operating in Macau. And with a third of the world's population within a short five-hour flight from here, Macau's being groomed to be the world's premium gambling destination. As if to prove it, Macau has already overtaken Vegas in terms of revenue. The only thing that remains unclear, though, is whether Macau can retain its unique, laid-back post-colonial lifestyle and its charm when Vegas comes to town.
The Venetian site may be huge, but it's becoming very cluttered. So now the most important thing in this area is clearing the lagoon. It's a bit of a mess and we're on a tight deadline. You see, Keith Buckley, construction the manager, out. is now on yeah, site. Okay, no problem, yeah. The lagoon, an artificial lake outside the walls of the complex, has not even been started yet. It's being used as one of the few available places for storage. All that has to change. So in about two weeks' time, this whole area will be clear? Yeah, whole area will be clear. Okay. The lagoon needs to be dug out, lined and filled. Otherwise, there'll just be a big hole on opening day. While this is going on, construction of a small theatre for special performances is nearing completion. The last stage, the roof. These enormous trusses are going to be raised from inside the theatre space. We're assembling the roof at ground level and lifting it to its final position 40 metres in the air. The overall roof comprises 14 trusses, which we've assembled in three sections. This is about a 55 metre span in this direction, so they're quite substantial trusses. They're raised using so-called climbing jacks, each one hoisting up to 100 tonnes over 40 metres into the air. We've been under time pressure all the way through to get it up into the air as quickly as possible. It's a very high-tech procedure. In the old days, it was a case of bang, 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 and away you went. It's a lot easier from our point of view, or from my point of view, but nowadays, to actually sell the product to clients, they need to see a computer system. But it causes so many headaches. One wire goes down, the whole system's gone. Each lift takes four to five hours. And despite the glitches, the roof eventually makes it into position. The theatre is part of Sheldon Adelson's plan to diversify the Venetian beyond pure hotel casino operations. It's a convention-based integrated resort, meaning the convention centre, the exhibition centre, is very necessary in order to fill the hotel midweek. If we didn't have these facilities, we'd never be able to succeed. Be that as it may, the casino is unavoidable. Even when you check in, the journey to your hotel room begins along a magnificent colonnade before inevitably you cross the entire casino floor. It's a long trek, but it's not a mega design floor, it's part of the plan. The interesting thing about the whole resort is how the business model is translated into a physical building. And of course the casino is the key component of the whole thing, it's the heart of everything. You go from every component in the project, from A to B, you're always passing through the casino. So when you have your check-in, you have to walk to your hotel lobby cores, that's on the other side of the casino. When you're coming from the Congress and you're going through to the restaurants, you see the casino. So everything revolves around the casino. It really is the heart of the entire project. Even while the exterior is unfinished, the interior is being fitted out. A Japanese company brings with it Japanese-style corporate calisthenics. These are the experts in aircon, an absolute essential in a sealed casino built in tropical Macau. The Venetian needs some 800,000 square meters of air ducts. Bringing them in ready-made would be a logistical nightmare. It's an estimated 6,000 truckloads on an already clogged site. The solution is simple. Build them on site. With the factory in the building, there are no additional transport costs. And measurements can be taken frequently and easily. Though having the factory here isn't a perfect solution either. Lack of a storage yard can mean problems if installation is held up for any reason. Averagely, we are producing 1,500 square meter of duct a day. That's about 500 pieces of duct. So if it's congested outside, we cannot deliver. You see, very, we have limited space inside the yard. So it's really very hard. But when everything is working, the ducts can be taken to their destination within minutes and installed right away. The end point of all this air ducting? 
huge cooling towers, which are also assembled on site and lifted into position. With hundreds upon hundreds of rooms to be cooled, these monsters will be belting out heat night and day. Off-site in a warehouse, we find Bob Lusak. He's the interior man, par excellence. He's taken Venice and is making it into the Venetian. It's the decorative magic that will keep the visitors in the casino. But the casino's not ready for him yet. When we do get the green light to go in and build it, we have to go quick and we have to know exactly what we're doing. So what we've done is we've gotten this warehouse space and we've started doing prototypes of what we're gonna do. With so much detailed work, there are endless problems to be solved. This is not a successful replication of what we're talking about. It's a bit too garish, it's a bit too colorful. This shouldn't have the brush marks on it. That makes it look like fresh out of the mold. And we can look at different finishes. You can see here you've got gold leaf and you've got gold paint and we're deciding between the two. There's a cost difference, there's a labor difference. And that's all predicated by this insane schedule. Basically we have to have people yes. working on top of yes. each other. How do you build a curved ceiling? This is the third attempt, which is successful. We want you to have the illusion that as you're walking along, the clouds are moving with you. So that takes layers and layers of different colorations and different paints, and it's, it's a difficult technique. A key feature will be the murals, copied from original Italian old masters. For Bob and his colleagues, it's an intricate procedure. They haven't quite cracked it yet. One of the biggest challenges of all, however, is the climate. It's incredibly humid all the time. If you put paint on past about 85% humidity, it won't stick because it'll seal in that moisture as a skin and then later off when the, when the temperature changes, when the humidity levels change, you get condensation inside there and it peels off. So you simply have to stop painting. As if Bob has summoned up the wind, there's a storm warning on site. Typhoon Salmai is on its way and threatening to turn into a super typhoon. The completed building will be typhoon proof with every element designed to withstand the highest wind speeds. But great care has to be taken with the building under construction. The workers batten down the hatches. There's little to be done while the storm rages, but hope. The typhoon passes and is to kill 441 in China when it makes landfall. But fortunately here, damage is minimal. We had the equivalent in a day of 15 Olympic sized swimming pools on our catchment area. Parts of the site are inundated, leaving the problem of getting rid of the water so work can be back to normal as soon as possible. As you can see, I'm ankle deep in water at the moment. And look over to my, uh, my left. You can see how we're still retaining the areas dry to keep the labor working on site. There's one place that water does belong though, and that's the lagoon. The area has finally been cleared and the digging begins. It's going to have the same amount of water as 9.4 Olympic swimming pools. So it's going to have to be watertight. If it leaked out, there could be untold damage. For Bob, the color is also an issue. Black. I just don't believe it. They said the lagoon's gonna be black. And I don't, I, don't, I don't agree, I don't get it, I don't understand it. He presented his objections to management in a way that's typically Bob. I took the opportunity to use a little bit of artwork to talk about aesthetics. So I did a quick little sketch we're going to have a lot of hot steaming water with chlorine fumes and it's just going to, it's not going to be a comfortable thing. Uh, it's called uh, Honeymoon at the Black Lagoon. The problem is, it's too late. You know, if, if I don't hear sometime in this next week that it's going to be green, it'll be a black tub.
The angel Gabriel has arrived. He's going to sit atop the Campanile, a replica of all the real Venice landmarks. Raising him is fraught with danger. A sudden gust of wind, a miscalculation with the crane heaving up this five meter, five ton statue is potential disaster for those working precariously 29 stories high. Finally, Gabriel, God's emissary, stands aloft in his new role as patron and protector of the whole Venetian site. But will his brassy benevolence be enough to see the works through the delays that lie ahead? The structure of the giant Venetian resort in Macau has been completed. It will be the biggest casino in the world. While some of the interior has been fitted out during building, there's still plenty more to be done before opening day. Until now, Bob Flusak, head of Thiening, has been testing out his designs in his warehouse. Now he can put them in their final position. It's a much better column than we had last time. The original design was too garish. Above the pillar is the huge space that will be hidden within the ceiling up to 4.5 meters high. This is where the utilities, ducts and cables can be hidden. With the ducting in place, the final touches can be put to the aircon. It's ready for its final tests. It's a complex system. It's going to supply cool air and ventilation to all 3,000 rooms in the hotel, as well as every other space indoors. Even the 15,000-seat arena and the exhibition areas will be served by these giant units. The testing is thorough. Fortunately, there seem to be no major leaks or obstructions. In the casino, the cabling team has struck a snag. There are cables for power. There are cables for security cameras. There are cables for the computer network. Serious length of cable. The power cables alone would stretch from LA to Portland, Oregon. The problem is, once it's been laid down and covered, circuits keep getting broken. Tracking the brakes down is proving quite a problem. As for the solution, well, Dick Simmons is on the case and he's tracked down the culprits. Rats. The problem's generated by the amount of people that we normally have on a construction site. Everybody has a lunch box. Everybody leaves a few scraps around. Just as a rat's heaven. The rats here seem to have developed a taste for the plastic coating on cables. So Dick has organized a rat catching crew. What do we got under there? There's one of last night's, is it? Yeah. Okay. Get the rat catcher over, let's get him destroyed properly. Yeah. And uh, get these things reset. Whether this is the ultimate solution to the rat problem, only time will tell. There could be plenty of damage hidden away. Unfortunately, we'll never know the full extent until we fire up the system. While Dick is hot foot on the hunt for rats, Bob is checking out some of his more decorative pillars. They've been designed to blend the very Western styling of the Venetian with some uniquely Asian elements. There's a lot of Asian symbolism there. There's nine fish, which represents a long life, a luck thing. There's a fish at the very top that's leaping out of the water. He's the lucky winner. There's, a, there's symbolism that I don't even know about here that represents good luck, good health, long life. The hope there is that obviously people come to see the Western architecture. When they come into the gambling areas, there's a comfort because they're surrounded by symbolism and things that they've grown up with that's comfortable to them while they're gambling. And by the time Bob's finished, there'll be 68 pillars to make the punters comfortable, all hand-painted in China. One of the highlights of the interior is the shopping areas, which are being decorated to look like the streets of Venice, complete with water-filled canals and gondolas.
Just a few short months ago, this area looked just like the rest of the site. Grey, characterless concrete. Gradually, it has been transformed. The ceiling has gone in. The facades have gone up. It's beginning to get that Venetian flavour that Bob's after. The idea is you'll feel you're wandering the streets outdoors, even when still inside the casino. So the illusion of an evening in Venice has to be perfect. Though not everything is to Bob's satisfaction yet. I want to take away some of that whiteness. It's just too fresh, it's too new. We need to, we need to put 50, 100 years on it. I really want to nail this, Norville, because I think if we nail this, you could, you could do the whole thing tomorrow. I can, I can do it to this level. Maybe add or brighten or something. We got to make it, make it undulate somehow. Kill it, kill it. Um, <laughs> let that dry out now, or do you want to mess with it? Let's let that dry out. It's still going to take some trying to get the aging effect Bob's looking for, and then to execute it over the whole mall. But with the schedule as it is, there's no time to get it wrong. It's a bit much, yeah. I think. Don't you think? You mean to have it all everywhere? We're gonna go up it's the point of no return. Any decisions made now have to be final. So Taking them, the, Matt the Pryor, the project here. manager. The front ones, yeah. And he's got a lot of ground to cover. That's fine. This is known affectionately as the wow space. Let's get those going, and that's approved, OK? Do a glass panel, some medallion thing in the middle, even better. I think it works well. Venetian, 100 years old. That's what we're aiming at. So let's get competitive prices on it so we know it's the right price. If I get you the area and the dimension. He has to get everything just right, because ultimately it's his neck on the line. Sometimes a whole feature just isn't good enough, and out it comes, even this late in the day. new luggage system has been installed. It's needed because the distances inside the Venetian are so great. You check in at reception, and then your trek to the hotel begins. Meanwhile, the bags take a luxurious 285-meter ride below floor level. They don't need the full-on casino experience. Bob is now spending most of his days on site. You know, I don't know if they're ever going to learn the lesson that, that you get what you pay for. You know, if everybody wants to go with the cheap guy and then you end up fixing no, it. Not boring. His philosophy is that if you invest in the craftsmanship now, it'll pay off later. One of the other things that will define this resort from a lot of the other casinos is this depth of design, this depth of feeling and atmosphere. So you'll be able to come and literally spend two or three days, God forbid, not gambling, just looking at the, at, at the beauty of it, looking and taking it all in. While Bob's looking at the buildings, his assistant, Paul Duggan's looking at the sky, and he's not happy. The clouds, fantastic job, but under our finished light conditions, we can see all of this three-dimensionality coming out from the previous trade contractor who installed the board. And again, to contract, he was meant to perform a level five finish, which means it must be flat. A bumpy sky doesn't cut the mustard, even if sprinkler caps are a necessary compromise. The biggest of all the skies in St. Mark Square, or the casino version of it, has to be wholly redone. We're looking at optimistically about a 20-day program. It's an expensive undertaking, but worth it to ensure the illusion remains in place and the visitors below never awaken from its magic. And in the pursuit of perfection, sometimes all that glitters 
really is gold. Just in the ceiling alone in this casino, there's three million pieces of gold leaf. We have about 60 people here at the present who do nothing else all day but pad on gold leaf. The entrance lobby and the long colonnade are where most visitors will have their first contact with the Venetian experience. Contrast at the edges. You know, see that's real white, so you don't get that real pop. We'll go over to the dome, take a look at the dome and see what's going on. We got to get this dome done to get everything else happening. And what we've had on the dome is we've had an adhesion problem with the texture. It could potentially hold up the opening of the casino. So, we, you know, we've got to come up with a solution. All right, it's run up. I got a split. The wow space, the central atrium of the casino, has been filled with scaffolding. It's a moment of truth. The murals are going up. This is the most, I think the most difficult piece because of the one, two, three, four, five. In the end, the murals have been digitally reproduced from the originals rather than using real painters to paint copies. I mean, the initial intention was to have the artwork done hand-painted by artists, but the sheer scope the, the massive amount, we've got over 800 murals that have to happen on the job site. Italian experts have been called in to supervise their mounting. In total, they will place 6,500 square meters of carefully reproduced painting. Rapidly, the casino is taking shape. The final date has been set for the opening, an auspicious one, 28th August. In Chinese, it signifies easy money. It's always as well to be on the right side of fate. And outside, the taps go on for the lagoon. A total of 23,490 cubic meters of water, 9.4 Olympic swimming pools are needed to fill it. Bob has lost his battle over the lining color, though. It isn't green. Nonetheless, this is an important step the Venetian is coming to life. The casino floor is also coming to life. The switch has been thrown and the electrics are mostly working. It seems that Dick has won his battle against the rats. There are a few minor repairs and the installations can all begin. Everything is coming together. Even now, just hours before opening, there are thousands of details to be taken care of. Guests will soon be checking in. VIPs arriving for the lavish opening ceremonies. And above all, ordinary visitors in their thousands eager to cast their money out upon the gambling tables. It's a frantic rush to the finish line. Nothing could be permitted to mar the opening of the world's biggest casino. As night falls, the work continues. On the morrow, the Venetian will reveal itself. The casino will come to life. It's going to be the biggest casino in the world. 
but will also have to be the most spectacular. There's a fortune and a billionaire's dreams riding on it. Opening day at the new Venetian Casino Resort in Macau, China. In three short years, one of the largest buildings in the world has risen from the waters of Macau. An accelerated construction plan that has challenged the builders every step of the way. There have been typhoons and floods. There has been a demanding schedule and an exacting changing design. There's been a vast number of contractors and strong personalities all working together. And now, it's over. It's almost like I'm waking up from some kind of a drug because the reality was we had this amazing amount of work to do in such a short amount of time. So I'd get up every morning and deny reality about how much we have to do and how long it should really take and then try to convince other people, yeah, we're gonna make it, we're gonna make it inside going, no way, you know? And now we're here and, and it's almost like I'm waking up and it's done. At last, the Venetian is revealed. In all its glory. A hotel with no rooms, but 3,000 suites. Three million pieces of gold leaf. Three canals, 147 meters long. 350 shops. Six thousand five hundred square meters of murals. Over fifty one thousand one hundred and fifteen square meters of casino floor. More than three thousand four hundred slot machines. More than eight hundred gaming tables. A total cost of 2.4 billion US dollars. Inside the spanking new behemoth of the casino, the croupiers are training, getting the feel for their tables. Macau, with all its gambling dens, has used up its available stock of skilled dealers. 2,723 croupiers have been hired, and they're all Macau residents, coming from all around the region, as far afield as the Philippines. It's a light-hearted session, with a serious undercurrent. They'll be shuffling around other people's money. When money changes hands, there's always tension in the air. So everything they do will be under the careful scrutiny of the pit bosses. Sixteen thousand workers have just joined the Venetian, five percent of Macau's workforce. They're all getting ready for their first day in uniform. For these many thousand uniforms, there's a unique wardrobing system. Each worker presents a pass to a reader and the computer recognizes which is their own personal hanger. Opening day has been planned as non-stop entertainment and with America's third richest man, Sheldon Adelson as host, security is tight. At the main entrance, the invited guests begin to arrive. VIPs from across Asia, adding a dash of glamour requisite to such occasions. The fun begins in St. Mark's Square. There are acrobats, models dripping with diamonds, Sheldon Adelson and the Venetian executives. A ribbon's cut. The gondolas are christened. Some willing newlyweds congratulated. 
Job done, mall open. The main theatre stage at the most auspicious time, 7.18 p.m. Ladies and gentlemen, on the count of it's three. It's the moment of truth. Three, two, one. After three challenging years, the Venetian Macau is open. The general public is now admitted, and the press is eager to get hold of the first gamblers making their way in. They are almost taking the surroundings for granted, though, as they make a beeline for the casino itself. And with the opening, Vegas rules now apply on the casino floor. Foremost among these, no cameras allowed. Outside, there's a queue hundreds of meters long. Ordinary people eager to see this unique building, looking forward to getting to the brand new gaming tables. On this first night, the Venetian is to report 76,000 visitors. And after just 17 days, it's one millionth. Sheldon Adelson can sleep easy. Expenditure on the Venetian casino is at an end. And the money could start rolling in.